commission, in which we would not have these sway. They'd come hither. I say, call before us, Angela. For you must know we have with special soul elected him our absence to supply, and given his deputation all the organs of our own power in Vienna. What think you of it? If any of Vienna be of worth, it is Lord Angelo. I come to know your pleasure. Angelo, thyself and thy belongings are not thine own so proper as to waste thyself upon thy virtues, and they on thee. Therefore, in our remove, be it full ourself. Mortality and mercy in Vienna live in thy tongue and thy heart. Old Aeschylus, though first in question, is thy secondary. Take thy commission. Now, <laughs> good my lord, let some more test be made of my metal. No more evasion. Our haste from here is of so quick condition, we shall write to you and tell you how it goes with us. And do look to know what doth befall you here. I'll privily away. I am. Uh, love the people. But do not like to stage me to their eyes. Nor do I think this man of safe discretion that does affect it. Once more, fare you well. I shall desire, sir, to seek free speech with you. Let us withdraw together. Keeping. Mm. Let's go learn the truth of it. And thus, what with the war, and what with poverty, and what with diseases, I am custom shrunk. You've heard of the proclamation, have you not? What? Proclamation, man. All the houses in the suburbs of Vienna must be plucked down. Are all our houses of resort? <laughs> To be pulled down to the ground, mistress. <laughs> that is change indeed in the Commonwealth. But what's to become of oh, me? Oh, come, fear you not. Good counsellors lack no clients. Though you change a place, you need not change a trade. I'll be a tapster still. Courage. Oh, Thomas. Tapster. <laughs> Let's withdraw. Look, here comes Signor Claudio, led by the promise to prison. And, and there's Madam Juliet. <laughs> Oh, fellow, fellow, why dost thou show me thus to the world? Bear me to prison, where I am committed. I do it not in evil disposition, but by Lord Angelo, by special charge. How now, Claudio? Oh, whence comes this restraint? From too much liberty, my Lucio. Liberty! What's thou offence, Claudio? 
What but to speak of would offend again. What? Murder? No. Lechery? Call it so. Way, sir, you must go. Lucio, you know the lady. She is fast my wife. We thought it meet to hide our love, but it chances the stealth of our most mutual entertainment was, uh, with character too gross, was writ on Juliet. With child, perhaps? Unhappily, even so. And now the new deputy to the strict duke awakes me all the enrolled penalties which have, like, unscoured armour hung by the wall and none of them been worn. Go to the duke and appeal to him. It is not to be found. I prithee, Lucio, do me this kind service. My sister, this day, should the cloister enter and there receive her approbation. Acquaint with her the danger of my state and implore her in my voice that she make friends to the strict deputy. She hath prosperous art, and well she can persuade. I pray she may, and for the enjoying of thy life, which I would be sorry should be thus foolishly lost in a game of tic-tac. Thanks, good Lucio. I'll to her, within two hours. Come, officer, away. <laughs> Delivered unto Lord Angelo, a man of stricture and firm abstinence, my absolute power and place here in Vienna. You will demand of me why I do this. Gladly, my lord. We have strict statutes and most biting laws, which this nineteen years we have let slip. In time, the rod becomes more mocked than fear, so our decrees dead to infliction to themselves are dead, and liberty plucks justice by the nose. Then rest in your grace, to unloose the tied up justice when you please, and knit you more dreadful would have seemed. Then I, Lord Angelo. I too dreadful, I fear. Sith, t'was my fault to give the people scope, t'would be my tyranny to strike and gall them. Therefore, indeed, father, I have given to Lord Angelo the office, who may, in the ambush of my name, strike home and behold his sway. I will, as t'were a brother of your order, visit both prince and people. Lord Angelo is precise. Stands at a guard with envy, scarce confesses that his blood flows or that his appetite is more to bread than stone. Hence, we shall see if power changes purpose, what our seamers be. Child. Sir, may we not your story? Oh, it is true. Your brother and his lover have embraced. As those that feed grow full, so to her plenteous womb expresses his full tilth and husbandry. Someone with child by him. Oh, my cousin Juliet. She it is. Oh, let him marry her. This is the point. The Duke has very strangely gone from hence. In his place, and with full line of his authority governs Lord Angelo, a man whose blood is very snow broth. He hath picked out an act, under whose heavy sense your brother's life falls into forfeit. All hope is gone, unless you, by the grace of your fair prayer, can soften Angelo. Alas, what poor abilities in me to do him good. Go to Lord Angelo, and let him learn to know. When maidens sue, Men give like gods. I will about it straight. Commend me to my brother. By course of night I'll send him word. Adieu. <coughs> we must not make a scarecrow of the law. Aye, but yet let us be keen and rather cut a little than fall and bruise to death. Let but your honour know, in the working of your affections, whether you had not 
some time in your life, air in this point, which now you censure him. It is one thing to be tempted, Aeschylus. Another thing to fall. You may not so extenuate his offence, but I have had such faults. But rather tell me, when I, that censure him, do so offend, let my own judgment pattern out my death, and nothing come impartial. So, he must die. Provost! Here, Your Honour. See that Claudio be executed by nine tomorrow morning. Well, heaven forgive him, and forgive us all. Some rise by sin, and some by virtue fall. <laughs> How now, what's the matter? What's your name? Uh, please, is your honor. I am the poor Jude's constable. My name is Elbow, and I do lean upon justice. And I do bring before your good self here two notorious benefactors. <laughs> are they not malefactors? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, I know not what they are. They're precise villains. Oh. They are that I am sure of. What are you, sir? Know you that. My wife, sir! <laughs> who I thank heaven is an honest woman. <laughs> By wife? I, sir, who I detest before heaven! Dost thou detest her therefore? I, as I detest myself also, as well as she, that this house as a naughty house. How dost thou know that, constable? Many, sir! By my wife, who if she'd been a woman kindly given, would have been accused of fornication, adultery, and all uncleanness there. But she spat on his face and defied her. This is not so. Prove it before these wicked violence here. Prove it. So she came in great with child and longing for sued prude. We had but two in the house in a fruit dish. It was a good dish, a dish of some frappings. It was not your china dish. Your worship has seen such dish. It was a good dish. No matter for the dish, sir. Uh, no, indeed, sir. This mistress Elbow being, as I said, with child and longing for stewed prunes and being great bellied, and us but having two in the house, and Master Froth here, sir, this very man having eaten the rest, and paid for them very honestly, for as I said, and as I say, I cannot give you frappence again. No, indeed. Why, very well then, if you being remembered cracking the stone to the foresaid prunes. Yeah, so I did indeed. Why, very well then. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was done to Elbow's wife that he have cause to complain of? Uh, sir, your honour cannot come to that yet. I beseech you, sir, look into Master Froth here, sir, a man of fourscore pounds a four year. Fourscore. There be truths. You were sitting, were you not, Master Froth, in the bunch of grapes where indeed you have a delight? To I, I in was not. indeed, because it is an open room and good for winter. Yeah. Man, this will last out a night in Russia, and indeed there the nights are longest. I'll take my leave, hoping that you'll find good cause to whip them all. Good morrow to your lordship. Now, what was done to Elbow's wife once more? Uh, once, sir? It was nothing done to her once. <laughs> Very well. Uh, doth your honour see any harm in his face? Why, no. His face is the worst thing about him. How could Master Froth do the constable's wife any harm? Oh, what say you, constable? First, this house is a respected house. Second, this fellow is a respected fellow whose mistress is a respected woman. Oh, his wife is a more respected person than any of us all. Oh, what a He was respected with her before he was married with her. Oh, what it, Keaton! I respected both her well, before I was made her. What's your master's worship's pleasure I should do with these wicked Keatons here? Honestly, constable, just because he has some offence in him that thou wouldst have found if thou couldst, 
Let him continue in his own course until thou knowest what they are. Wicked Barlow! Master Froth, Master Froth, Master Froth, get you gone and let me hear of you no more. Farewell. <laughs> oh, what's your name, Master Tapster? Pompey. Are you not aboard, Pompey? I'm a poor fellow that would live. Is it a lawful trade? The law would allow it, sir. Ah, but the law will not allow it, Pompey, nor will it ever be allowed in Vienna. Doth your worship mean to geld and splay all the youth of the city? Uh, no, Pompey. Well, sir, in my humble opinion, they will to it then. Let me advise you, Pompey. Let me not catch you on any complaint whatsoever, or else I shall have you whipped. Farewell, Pompey. I thank your worship. Whip me? No, let the carman whip his jade. The valiant heart will be whipped out of his trade. It grieves me for the death of Claudio. It is but needful. Mercy is not itself. That oft looks so. And pardon is the nurse of second woe. But still, poor Claudio! Now, what's the matter, Provost? Is it your will? Claudio will die tomorrow. Did I not tell thee yet? Hadst thou not order, why dost thou ask again? Lest I not be too rash, I have seen after execution. Judgment hath been repented. Do you your office, or give up your place? What shall be done with the groaning Juliet? She very Dear, near her hour. Dispose of her to some more fitter place. And that with speed! Here is the sister of the man condemned, desires access to you. Mm, well, uh, let her be admitted. You're welcome. What's your will? Well, the matter. <clears throat> I have a brother. Is condemned to die. I do beseech you, let it be his fault and not my brother. Condemned the fault and not the actor of it. <laughs> Mine were the very cipher of a function to find the faults and let go by the actor. Oh, just but severe law then. I had a brother. Heaven keep your honour. Give you not or so. To him, again, you are too cold. To him, to him, I say. Must he needs die? Major, no remedy. Yes. I think you might pardon him. And neither heaven nor man would grieve at the mercy. I will not do it. But can you, if you could? Look, what I will not, that I cannot do. But you might do it, and do the world no wrong. Mm, he's sentenced. Tis too late. You are too cold. Too late? Why, no. I that do speak a word may call it back again. Well, believe this, no ceremony which the great ones longed, not the king's crown, the deputed sword, the marshal's truncheon, the judge's robes, becomes with them one half so good a grace as mercy does. Pray you, be gone. I would that I had your potency and you were Isabel. Should it then be thus? Your brother is a forfeit of the law, and you but waste your words. But how would you be if he that is at the top of judgment should but judge you as you are? I be you content, fair maid. It is the law, not I, condemn your brother. He must die tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, that sudden, spare him, spare him, good, good, my lord. He is not prepared to die. Bethink you, who is it that hath died for this offence? There's many have committed it, that's well said. The law hath not been dead, though it hath slept. Those many had not dared to do that evil if the first that did the edict in fringe had answered for his deed. Now tis awake. Yet show some pity. I show it most of all when I show justice. Your brother dies tomorrow, be content. So you must be the first that gives this law. 
than he, the first that must suffer for it. Oh, tis excellent to have a giant's strength, but tis tyrannous to use it like a giant. <laughs> That's well said. A good great men thunder, as Jove himself does, Jove would ne'er be quiet. For every pelting, petty officer would rather use his heaven for thunder, nothing but thunder, merciful heaven. Thou, with thy sharp and sulphurous bolt, splits the unwedgeable and gnarled oak than the soft myrtle, but man, proud man, dressed in little brief authority, most ignorant of what he's most assured, his glassy essence, like an angry ape, plays fantastic tricks before how heaven has made the angels weep. Why do you put these sayings upon me? Go to your bosom, knock there, and ask your heart what it doth know. That's like my brother's fault. If it confesses a natural guiltiness as is his, let it not sound a thought upon your tongue against my brother's life. She speaks, and it is such sense that my sense breeds with it. Fare you well. Good my lord, turn back. I will bethink me, come to me tomorrow. Ah, how I'll bribe you, turn back. How? Bribe me? I, with such gifts that heaven will share with you. You have marred all else, not with fond shekels of the tested gold, but with true prayers that shall be up in heaven and enter there. Well, come again tomorrow. Go to. Tis well. Away. Heaven keep your honour. Amen. For I'm that we're going to temptation where prayers cross. Save your honour. Save your honour. From thee. Even from thy virtue. What's this? <laughs> what, what's this? Is this her fault or mine? The tempter or the tempted? Who sins most? <laughs> Not she, not, nor doth she tempt, but it is I that, lying by the violet in the sun, do as the carrion does, not as the flower, corrupt with virtuous season. Can it be that modesty may more betray our sense than woman's likeness? Oh, fie, fie, fie! What dost thou, or what art thou? thou, Angelo, dost thou desire her foully for those things that make her good? What? Do I love her, that I desire to hear her speak again and feast upon her eyes? What is that I dream on? Oh, cunning enemy, that to catch a saint with saints does bait thy hook. <laughs> Never could the strumpet with all her double vigour, art and nature once stir my temper, but this virtuous maid subdues me quite. I am come to visit the afflicted spirits here in the prison. Here comes one. She is the child, and he who got it sentenced. When must he die? As I do think tomorrow. Repent you, fair one, of the sin you carry. I, I do, and bear the shame most patiently. Love you the man that wronged you? Yes, as I love the woman that wronged him. And it seems your most offenseful act was committed mutually. Mutually. Then is your sin of far heavier kind than his. I do repent it, Father. Tis me so, daughter, but less I do, do repent. Father. As it is an evil. And I take the shame with pride. There, rest. Your partner, I hear, must die tomorrow. 
Christ go with you. Must he die tomorrow? Oh, endure his love. That respites me, a life whose very comfort is, is still a, a, a dying horror. <coughs> when I would pray and think, I think and pray to several subjects. Heaven hath my empty words, whilst my invention, hearing not my tongue, anchors on Isabel. Heaven in my mouth, as if I did but only chew his name, and in my heart, the strong and swelling evil of my conception. Oh, place, oh, form. How often dost thou, with thy case, thy habit, wrench all from fools and tie the wiser souls to thy false seeming blood? <laughs> thou art blood. Uh, let's write good angel on the devil's horn. He's not the devil's crest. How now? Who's there? One sister Isabella desires access to you. <laughs> Teach her the way. Oh! Heavens, why does my blood thus muster to my heart? How now, fair maid? I have come to know your pleasure. Mm, that you might know it would much better please me than to demand what it is. Your brother cannot live. Even so. Heaven keep your honour. Yet may he live a while, and... It may be as long as you or I. Yet he must die. Under your sentence. Yea. Gwen, I beseech you, that in his reprieve, longer or shorter, he may be so fitted that his soul sicken not. Ha! <laughs> By these filthy vices, it were as good to pardon him that hath from nature stolen a man already made than to remit their saucy sweetness that do coin heaven's image in stamps that are forbid. To set down so in heaven, but not in earth. Say you so? Then I shall pose you quickly. Which had you rather, that the most just law now took your brother's life, or, to redeem him, give up your body to such sweet uncleanness as she that he hath stained? How say you? Answer to this, might there not be a charity in sin to save this brother's life? Please you to do it. I'll take it as peril on my soul. It is no sin but charity that I do beg my brother's life. If it be sin, heaven let me bear it. Nay, but hear me. Your sense pursues not mine. Either you are ignorant or seem so craftily. And that's not good. Then let me be ignorant and in nothing good, but graciously to know that I am no better. Let me be bold. Your brother is to die. So? Admit no other way to save his life, but that you, his sister, finding yourself desired, must lay down the treasures of your body, or else to let him suffer, what would you do? Were I under terms of death, the keen impression of whips I'd wear as rubies, er, uh, I'll yield my body up to shame. Then must your brother die. Better her brother die at once than that a sister, in redeeming him, should die forever. Were not you then as cruel as the sentence that you have slandered so? Lawful mercy is nothing akin to foul redemption. I'll speak more gross. I do arrest your words. Be that you are, that is, a, a woman, as you are, well expressed by all external warrants. Show it now by putting on the destined livery. Plainly conceive, I love you. <laughs> My brother did love Isabel. And you tell me that he shall die for it. Mm, he shall not, Isabel, if you give me love. 
I know your virtue hath the license in it. That seems a little fouler than it is to pluck on others. Believe me, on mine honour, my words express my purpose. <laughs> a little honour to be much believed, in a most pernicious purpose. Seeming, seeming, I will proclaim thee, Angelo. Look for it, sign me present pardon for my brother, or or, with an outstretched throat, I'll tell the world aloud what man thou art. Who will believe thee, Isabel? My unsoiled name, the austereness of my life, my vouch against you, and my place in the state, will so your accusation overweigh that you shall stifle in your own report and smell of calumny. I have begun, and now I give my sensual race the reign. Fit thy consent to my sharp appetite. <laughs> Lay by all nicety and prolixious blushes that banish what they sue for. <laughs> Redeem thy brother by yielding up thy body to my will, or else he must not only die the death, but thy unkindness shall his death draw out to lingering sufferance. Answer me tomorrow, or by the affection that now guides me most, I'll prove a tyrant to him. As for you, say what you can, my false overweighs your true.
Now, sister, what's the comfort? Lord Angelo, having his affairs to heaven, intends for you, his swift ambassador, tomorrow you set on. Is there no remedy? None. But such a one as to save a life would cleave a heart in twain. But is there any? Yes, brother. You may live. There is a devilish mercy in the judge, if you will implore it, that will free your life, fetter you till death. Perpetual durance? Aye. But in what nature? In such a one as you consenting to it would bark your honour from that trunk you bear and leave you naked. Let me know the point! Oh, I fear thee, Claudio. And I quake, lest thou a fervorous life should entertain six or seven winters more respect than perpetual honour. Darest thou die? If I must die, I will encounter darkness as a bride and hug it in mine arms. Ne'er spake my brother. This outward sainted deputy is yet a devil, and the filth within him being cast would make a pond appear as deep as hell. The priestly Angelo. Oh, cunning livery. Dost thou think, Claudio? If I would yield to him, my virginity, thou mightst be freed. Thou shalt not do it. If it were my life, I'd throw it down for your deliverance as frankly as a pin. Thanks, dear Isabel. Be ready, Claudio, for your death tomorrow. Yeah. Death is a fearful thing. And a shamed life a hateful. I. What? To die. And go. We know not where. To lie in cold obstruction and to rot. The sensible warm emotion to become a needed clod. And the delighted spirit to bathe in fiery floods or to reside in thrilling region of thick-ribbed ice, to be imprisoned in the viewless winds and blown about the restless world with violence. It is too horrible. Alas, alas. Sweet sister, let me live. What sin you do to save a brother's life Nature dispenses with the deed so far that it becomes a virtue. You beast! A dishonest, wretch, faithless coward wouldst thou be made a man of my vice. It's not, it's not a kind of incest to take a life from thine own sister's shame. Die, perish, my butt, my bending down, reprieve thee from thy fate. It's best thou lay no, him, Isabel. Oh, fie, fie, by thy sins, not accidental, but a trade. And mercy to thee would prove itself a bored. Thou diest quickly. Hear me, Isabel. Son, I've overheard what hath passed between you and your sister. Lord Angelo had never the purpose to corrupt her. He had merely made an essay of virtue. Tomorrow you must die. Let me beg my sister pardon. I am so out of love with life that I will sue to be rid of it. The assault that Angelo hath made to you, fortune hath conveyed to my understanding. How will you do to contend with this substitution and to save your brother? better. 
I'd rather a brother die by the law than that my son should be unlawfully born. But, oh, how much is the good Duke deceived in Angela? Pardon on my advice. You may most uprightly do a poor wrong lady in merited benefit. Redeem your brother from the angry law. Do no stain to your own most gracious person and much please the absent Duke. Speak, Father. Have you not heard speak of Mariana? I know the lady. She should this Angela have wed. Was betrothed to him and the nuptial date appointed. Between which time she lost a noble brother and with him her marriage dowry with both her combinate husband, this well-seeming Angelo. Did Angelo so leave her? Left her in tears. Dried not one of them with his comfort. How from this can she avail? It is a rupture you may easily heal. Go you to Angelo. Agree with his demands. Only Lend yourself to disadvantage, that the time should have all shadow and secrecy to it, and the place answer to convenience. We will advise this poor maid to go in your place. By this is your brother saved, your honour untainted, the poor Mariana advantaged, and the corrupt deputy scaled. What think you? The image of it gives me content already. Go, haste then. Promise Angelo satisfaction. Dispatch. <laughs> causes to be done, canst thou believe thy living is a life so stinkingly dependent? Go mend, go mend! Well, indeed it does stink in some sort, sir, but yet go I... Go take him to prison, officer. Correction and instruction must both work here. This rude beast shall profit. To the deputy, sir, he cannot abide. A whoremaster has met will come to your waist, sir. A corda. Oh, I spy comfort, I cry bail. He's a gentleman and a friend of mine. No, no. Our noble Pompey, for what sayest thou, Trot? Is the world as it was, man? Still thus and thus, still worse. And how doth my horse, thy mistress? Procure she still, huh? Ooh, truth, sir, she has eaten up all her beef, and she is herself in the tub. It must be so. Have your fresh whore and your powdered board, Pompey. I'm going to prison. Yes, faith, sir. For being a boy! For being a boy! Pompey, oh, commend me to the prison. Oh, I hope your good gentleman will be my bail. No, indeed will I not, Pompey. Oh, oh, bless you, Friar. And you. Come your way, sir. You will not bail me then, sir. Then, Pompey, nor now. Come your way, sir. Come. Go to kettle, Pompey. Go. Oh. Oh, what news, Friar, of the Duke? I know not. Some say he is with the Emperor of Russia. Other some he is in Rome. But where is he, think you? I know not. It was a mad, fantastical trick of the Duke to steal from the state. Old Angelo dukes it well in his absence. He puts transgression to it. He does well it. Well, a little more lenity too. 
lechery would do no harm in him. Something a little more crabbed that way, friar. It is too general a vice, and severity must cure it. They say that Angelo was not born of man and woman. How should he be made, then? Some say that a sea maid spawned him. <laughs> Other some, that he was begot between two stock fishes. <laughs> But it is certain that when he makes water, his urine is congealed ice. You are pleasant, sir. Why? What a ruthless thing is this in him? The rebellion of a codpiece to take away the life of a man? Would the Duke that is absent have done this? He had some feeling of the sport. He knew the service. The absent Duke was not inclined that way. Oh, sir, you are deceived. His use was to put a ducket in her clap dish. You do him wrong. <laughs> Sir, I was an inward of his. A very superficial, ignorant, unweighing fellow. You speak unskillfully, or else your knowledge is much maligned. Sir, I know him, and I love him. I pray you, your name. Sir, my name is Lucio, well known to the Duke. Now, no more of this. Canst thou tell me if Claudio die tomorrow or no? Why must he die? Why? For filling a bottle with a ton dish. This Angelo will unpeople the province with continency. Sparrows must not rest in his house use because they are lecherous. Marry, this Claudio is condemned for untrussing. Farewell, good friar. And the Duke, I say to thee again, would eat mutton on Fridays. He's not past it yet. Farewell. What king so strong can tie up the gall in the slanderous tongue? Come, away with her to prison! I said, away with her to prison! Good, my lord, be good to me. Your honour is accounted an honourable man, a merciful man, good my lord. A bald eleven years continuance, your honour. That is one Lucio's information against me, and Mistress Kate keep down with child by him, and I kept this child this year and a quarter, and see how he's gone about it to abuse me. Let him be called before us, and away with her to prison! Provost, my brother Angelo remains unaltered. Claudio must die tomorrow. So please you, the friar hath been with him and advised him for the entertainment of death. What news have brought it the world? That there is scarce truth enough to make society secure, yet security enough to make fellowship accursed. Much upon this riddle runs the wisdom of the world, tis old news, yet tis every day's news. Let me know to desire how you find Claudio prepared. Greatly humbles himself to the determination of justice. Now he is resolved to die. You have paved the heavens your function. My brother justice have I found so severe. If, if he straight, if the straightness of his life answer not that of proceedings, he hath sentenced himself. <laughs> Take the 
this good deputy. He hath a garden, circumured with brick, and there, upon the heavy middle of the night, have I made my promise to call upon him. But shall you, on your honour, find this way? He did show me the way, twice o'er. <laughs> She'll take the enterprise upon her father, and I promised that my stay can be but brief. That is well worn up, and it is not my consent. My entreaty, also. Little have you to say when you depart from him, but soft and low. Remember now, my brother. Fear you not, for he is your husband on a pre-contract to bring you thus together. Tis no sin. <laughs> and I can never cut off a woman's head. Huh. Yield me a direct answer. Art to die tomorrow, Barnardine and Claudio. If you're to assist, it shall redeem you. If not, you will have your full time of imprisonment. I would be glad to receive some instruction. A person! Here's a fellow who will help you with your execution tomorrow. He hath been aboard. Aboard, sir. Fie upon him. He will discredit our mystery. Well, go to it. You will lay equally. A feather will turn the scale. Provide your axe and your block tomorrow, four o'clock. Come, sir. I will instruct thee in my trade. I do desire to learn, sir. Look, here's the warrant, Claudio, for thy death. It is now midnight, and by eight tomorrow, thou must be made immortal. Where's Barnardine? Fast locked up in sleep. Who can do good on him? Go, prepare yourself. What comfort is for Claudio? There's some in post. She's a bitter deputy. Not so, not so. His life is paralleled even by the stroke and line of his great justice. Have you no countermand for Claudio yet? None, sir, none. You shall hear more in morning. Happily something you know. He's the Lordship's man. And here comes Claudio's pardon. My lord hath sent you this note. And by me a further charge that you should not stray from the smallest article of it neither in time, matter, or circumstance. Well, good morrow, sir. For as I take it, it is almost day. I shall obey him. Here is the pardon, purchased by such sin for which the pardoner himself is in. Now, sir, what news? Whatsoever you may hear to the contrary, let Claudio be executed by four of the clock, and in the afternoon, Barnardine. For my better satisfaction, let me have Claudio's head sent to me by five at your peril. Prisoner of nine years, a man who apprehends death no more dreadfully than in a drunken sleep. You give him leave to escape, he will not. He's drunken many times a day. More of him anon. 
I will lay myself in hazard. I crave a present and dangerous courtesy. Pray, sir, in what? In the delaying death. Lack, well, how may I do it? Express command to deliver his head in the view of Angelo. Let this Barnardine be this morning executed, and his head carried to Angelo. Pardon me, good friar, but it is against my oath. You will think you do no wrong if the Duke avouch the justice of your dealing. What is the likelihood in that? Here is the hand and seal of the Duke. I have no them both. He comes home these two days. Angelo knows not. Put not yourself into amazement yet. Call your executioner and off with Barnardine's head. This shall absolutely resolve you. Come away. pray with you. No, I will not consent to die in this day. Oh, but so you no. must. I'll I'll kill you. Of it. After him. No. <laughs> How do you find the prisoner? Unmeet for death. Well, uh, in the prison, Father, just a few days ago, a prisoner, uh, his name, Juan Bragasin, a most notorious pirate, his hair, the same of Claudio's, and his age too. What if we satisfy the deputy with the visage of Ragusine? Oh, tis an accident such as God provide. Quick, dispatch and send the head. Now, will I write letters to Angelo, the contents of which shall witness to him that I am close to home and bound by great injunction to enter publicly. I have the head. I shall make all speed. to you, fair and gracious daughter. Hath yet the deputy sent my brother's pardon? He hath released him, Isabel, from this world. His head is off and sent to Angelo. Tomorrow, 
Aeschylus and Angelo do prepare to meet him at the gates there to give up their power. Haste your wisdom. You shall have revenges for your heart and general honour. These, these letters to Friar Peter give. Tell him I desire his company tonight at Mariana's house. He will bear you to the Duke and to the head of Angelo. Accuse him. Home and home. His actions show much like to madness. Why meet him at the gates? I guess not. <laughs> and why should we proclaim that if any crave redress of injustice, they should exhibit their petitions in the street? To deliver us from the vices hereafter, so that they may be powerless to stop us. <laughs> well, let it be proclaimed in the morn. I'll call you at your house. Good night. This deed unshapes me quite a deflowered maid, and by an eminent body that enforced the law against it, but that her tender shame will not proclaim against her maiden loss, how might she tongue me? Oh, he should have lived. But save that riotous youth with dangerous sense might have taken revenge in the times to come. Oh, would yet he had lived! These letters at fit time deliver me. The provost knows our purpose and our plot. They shall be speeded well. I speak so indirectly, I am alone. And yet to accuse him, so that is your part. And yet, he says that I must do it to veil full purpose. Be ruled by him. Besides, he said that if peradventure he should speak against me, on the adverse side I should think it not strange. Tis a physic that's bitter to sweet end. Come, I have found you a stand most fit. The Duke is coming, therefore hence away. Noble and worthy cousin, fairly met. Happy return be to your royal grace. Many and hearty thanksgivings. Give me your hand. Let's show the subject. <laughs> now is your time. <laughs> Speak loud. Go. Uh, oh, worthy prince, hear me in my true complaint and give me justice. Justice, justice, justice. Relate your wrongs. Here is Lord Angelo who shall give you justice. You bid me seek redemption of the devil. Hear me yourself. Hmm. My lord, her wits, I fear me, are not firm. She hath been a suitor to me for her brother, cut off by course of justice. By course of justice. And she will speak most bitterly and strange. Most strange, yet most true shall I speak. That Angelo's forsworn, tis not strange. That Angelo is a murderer, tis not strange. That Angelo is an adulterous thief, a hypocrite, a virgin violator, is not strange and strange. Nay, it is ten times strange. It is ten times true. And truth is truth to the end of reckoning. Away with her, poor fool. She speaks in the infirmity of sense. Oh, worthy prince, do you believe that there is a comfort beyond this world? Make the truth appear where it seems hid. What would thou say? I am the sister to one Claudio, condemned to death upon the act of fornication. I was sent by my brother to Angelo, and how I persuaded, how I kneeled and prayed, he would not but by gift of my chaste body to release my brother. And after much debatement, I did yield to him. 
And the next morn, his purpose sufficing, he did send the warrant for my poor brother's head! Oh, wretch, thou knowest not what thou speaks. Someone hath set thee on. Confess the truth. Is this it? Say by whose advice thou camest to Is this place. it? Oh, powers above, instilling me patience to reveal the evil that is wrapped up in countenance! Take her away. This needs must be a practice. Who, who knew of your intent in coming here? One that I wish were here, one Friar Lodderwick. Who knows this Lodderwick? Oh, to the meddling, Friar. I do not like the man. Oh. Well, for certain words he spake against your grace, I had swinged him soundly. Words what? against me? Let this Friar be found. Oh. She and that Friar, I saw them at the prison. A saucy Friar. I know him. For a man divine and holy. My lord, most villainously believe it. Upon his request, when I came to the knowledge that there was complaint intent against Lord Angelo, I came hither to speak as from his mouth. What he doth know is both true and false. First, for this woman. Her shall you hear disprove it to our eyes till she herself confess it. Let's hear it, Friar. Do not laugh at this, Lord Angelo. <laughs> this your witness, Friar? Let her show her face. Pardon, my lord, I will not show my face until my husband bid me. What? Are you married? No, my lord. Are you a maid, then? No, my lord. A widow? Neither, my lord. Why? Then you are nothing. Well, she may be a punk, my lord, but many of them are neither maid, widow, nor wife. Silence that fellow. I have known my husband yet. My husband knows not that ever he knew me. He was drunk then. Silence! She that accuses him of fornication in self-same manner doth accuse my husband. Charges she more than me? Not that I know. You say your husband. That is Angelo who thinks he ne'er knew my body, but knows he thinks he knows Isabel. This is a strange abuse. Uh, let's see thy face. My husband bid me. This is that face, thou cruel Angelo, which once thou sworest was worth the looking on. This is the hand that with a vowed contract was fast belocked in thine. This is the body which took away that match from Isabel and did supply thee at thy garden in her imagined person. Know you this woman? Carnally! No more! My lord, I must confess, I know this woman. And there was some speech of marriage which was broke off, since which time of five years I never spake with her. As there is sense in truth, and truth in virtue, I am this man's wife as strongly as words make up vows, and, my dear lord, but Tuesday night last gone in Garden's house, he knew me as a husband. I, 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 do, I do perceive these poor informal women are no more but instruments of some more mightier member that sets them on. Let me have way, my lord, to find this practice out. I with my heart. Lord Aeschylus, stay with my cousin. Find out this abuse, whence tis derived. There is another friar that hath set them on. Where's he? He hath indeed set the women unto this complaint. Your provost may fetch him. Go do it instantly. I will away from you for a while. But stir not from this place. For you have determined upon these slanderers. Senor Lucio, was it not you who said knew Friar Lodowick to be a dishonest person? I. Honest in nothing, one that has spoke most villainous speeches of the Duke. We shall entreat you to abide here till he come. Call that same Isabel. I pray you, my lord, give me leave to question. You'll see how I handle her. Come on, mistress. This gentlewoman denies everything you have said. My lord, this is the rascal I spoke of. In very good time, speak not you to him till we call upon you. Mom. Friar, 
Is it not true that you set these two women against Lord Angelo? Tis false. How? Know you where you are. Where is the Duke? Is he who should hear me speak? The Duke is within us. We shall hear you speak. Good night to your redress. The Duke is gone, and so too is your cause gone. He's unjust. To put the trial in the very mouth of the man you come here to accuse. So this is the rascal, this is he I spoke of. Thou unreverent and unhallowed friar, to the rack with you. Be not so hot. The Duke can no more stretch this finger of mine than he would rack his own. I am not his subject. Here in Vienna, I have seen corruption boil and bubble till it o'errun the stew. Slander to the state? Away with him to prison! Hey, what can you vouch against him, Signor Lucio? Come hither, goodman. Do you know me? I met you at the prison. You said the Duke was a fleshmonger, a fool, and a coward. You indeed such such things, and much worse. Did not I pluck thee by the nose for thy offences? I object. I love the Duke as I love myself. Villain! Did you not hear me? Away with him to prison! Stay, sir, stay a while. What? Resist ye? Help him, Lucio. Come, sir, come, sir. Foe, sir, you bald, hated, lying rascal. You must be hooded, must you? Show your knaves bizarre with a pox to you. Wilt not off! Sneak you not away, sir. The friar and you must have words and none. This may prove worse than hanging. Lay hold on him. What you have said? I forgive. Sit you down. Have you not wit, nor wisdom, nor impudence that can yet do the office? No, oh, my dread lord, no longer session hold upon my shame, but rather let my trial be mine own confession. Immediate sentence then, and sequent death is all the grace I beg. Come hither, Mariana. Was thou ever contracted to this woman? My lord, I was. Take her hence, and marry her instantly. Thy friar is now thy prince. Thy brother's death is heavy on thy heart, I know. That life is better life past fear and death. Be your comfort. For this new married man you must forgive. For Mariana's sake. Though, having adjudged your brother, being criminal in double violation of sacred chastity and promised bond, the very mercy of the Lord doth cry out in voice most audible with proper tongue. An Angelo for Claudio, death for death. Haste still pays haste, and leisure answers leisure. Like doth quit like, and measure still for measure. Then, Angelo, thy faults thus manifested, which though thou wouldst deny, denies thee vantage. We do condemn thee to the very block where Claudio stooped to die. And with like haste, away with him to death. Oh, my gracious lord. I hope you will not mock me with a husband. I thought your marriage fit. His belongings, though ours by confiscation, we do in state and widow thee with all. To buy you a better husband. Oh, my dear lord, I crave no other, nor no better man. You do but lose your labour. Take him away. Sweet Isabel, take my part. Hold up your hands and say nothing. I'll say all. They say that men are moulded out of fault. Oh, gracious lord, I do think that a little due sincerity did govern this man until he did look upon me. Let, Let him, him not die. die. 
he dies for Claudio's death. Brothers, why was Claudio executed at such an unusual hour? It was commanded so by private order, where one who should have died, I have reserved alive. What's he? His name is Barnaby. Barnaby? Let him be brought forth, I would look on him. Barnardine, thou said to have a stubborn soul, thou condemned. But for all thy earthly faults, I quit thee. <laughs> What's this muffled fellow? Another prisoner who should have died when Claudio lost his face. Hey. If he be like your brother, I do pardon him for his sake, and for your dear sake. Give me your hand, and say you will be mine. Claudio, look you restore the woman you wronged. Joy to you, Mariana. Love her, Angela. Thanks, good friend Aeschylus, for thy goodness. Thanks, Provost, for thy care and secrecy. Dear Isabel. I have a motion which much imports your good. If you'll a willing ear incline, what's mine it is yours, and what is yours is mine. Then bring us to a palace where we'll show what's yet behind. That's meat you all should know.